The National Broadcasting Company presents Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 3. Of Unsound Mind stars the lovely and talented young American actress Jean Tatum as Myra. The script was written by Harry W. Junkin, who also directs the production. Here is Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 3 of Unsound Mind. I won't do it. I won't live with a man who's insane. He isn't insane. You're married to him, and you will live with him for a while at any rate. I can't, I tell you, I can't. I, I can't bear living with him any longer. Our reputations in this town are pretty well shot, Myra. If you leave Caleb now, I I'm afraid... I don't care about public opinion. Well, I do. It means my bread and butter. Just to, to see him makes me sick. Now, look. He's been four years in the Air Force, two years in this... this nut house. Now he's cured. For six years, you've been spending his money and having yourself quite a happy time with it. Well, now you're going to turn into a sweet, devoted little Baltimore housewife. You'll go to Windy Hill and get him, and you'll bring him home and live with him. But, Jeff, he's crazy. He's nothing of the sort, or Dr. Hamilton wouldn't let him come home. And Hamilton's one of the leading psychiatric men on the continent. Jeff, I can't stand it, that's all. I can't live with a man that's insane. He's not insane, and you'll go up to Windy Hill and get him. Dr. Hamilton, before I take Caleb home from here, is there anything else I should know? I don't think so. He's completely cured. Uh, just be kind to him, that's all. Oh, I will, I will. I've waited so long for this day. I've been pretty lonely, Dr. Hamilton. I'm sure you have. Caleb's a fine man. There's no danger of a relapse? It's so remote, Mrs. Hunt, that I'd say there's no danger at all. <laughs> Two or three things still bother him. Uh, fire, for instance, and traffic. He shouldn't drive a car for a few months. We planned a little motor trip to New York. Shouldn't I let him drive? No, positively no driving. If he got excited or if something startled him, he might freeze to the wheel. Uh -huh. Just try to keep him as relaxed as possible, mentally and physically. Yes, of course I will. Tell me, Dr. Hamilton, just what did you do to Caleb? To fix him up, I mean. Uh, we've done a great deal, Mrs. Hunt. We put a tantalum plate in his head. You see, when his plane crashed, the wound in his head resulted in an actual breakdown of brain tissue. Now, that part is healed. Now he needs some rest and a lot of happiness. And you. Does it hurt, this place thing? Not a bit. And he is cured? Oh, completely. We owe you a great deal, Dr. Hamilton. Nonsense, my dear, nonsense. Uh, oh, tell me, uh, what are your plans? Plans? Yes, where will you live? Right here in Baltimore. We're driving to New York, sort of a second honeymoon. Oh, I see. Then we'll come back here. Good. Trip will do him good. Uh, let him make the decisions where to eat and what to do. You know, it'll uh, give him confidence in himself. Oh, I'll do everything I can. Good. And now you better go and find him. He's waiting for you in the reception room on the first floor. I've already said my goodbyes to him. So go on your motor trip to New York and never think of Windy Hill again. <laughs> Fine. I hope you didn't mind my suggesting you draw. Really, I was exhausted. Oh, no, I'm fine. It's good for me. I've got to get over these crazy notions. Well, just that Dr. Hamilton said that you shouldn't do any driving. I should never have suggested it. I don't know how Oh, I... forget it. I'm fine, really. Don't go too fast. Oh, relax, Myra. I'm fine. Our reservations, please. Uh, who on earth are you phoning at 7 o'clock in the morning? Parlock Car Reservations? This is Mrs. Caleb yeah. Hunt, room 815, Walter mm. Astoria. Could I possibly get two chairs and a parlor car to Baltimore this morning? Myra, what are you doing? Oh, darling, I can't see you. 
Yes? To Baltimore, yes. My husband isn't well, and I want to get him home as quickly as possible. What do you mean, I'm not what, well? What time does it leave? Oh. Well, how about 11.30? Myra. Well, That's very kind of you. Could we pick them up at the station? Myra, for goodness uh, sake, Thank I'll... you very much. Hunt, that's right. Myra. C-H. 815 Waldorf Astoria. That's right. Thank you very much. Uh, Myra, I don't want to go home. Darling, go back to sleep. You needn't get up for an hour yet. There's nothing the matter with me, and this is simply ridiculous. Why shouldn't we stay in New York and have some fun? After all, neither of us was hurt. We might have been, Caleb. And an accident like that, well, such a shock to your nerves. It's a shock to yours, too, isn't it? It's not the same thing, Caleb. After all, you've been ill. Very ill. Oh, nonsense. It isn't nonsense at all. I just want to take care of you, that's all. I don't need taking care of... For your own good, darling. There's nothing the matter with me, I tell you. We do have to be careful, though. But you don't have to whisk me back to Baltimore after one day in New York. Why, we haven't seen a thing yet. Anyhow, how will we get the car back? It'll take him at least a week to fix it. The car isn't as important to me as you are, darling. Well, I'm not going. Caleb, honey, I love you so much that I'd never forgive myself if anything happened to you. I should never have let you drive. I feel personally responsible for the accident. If you kept your hands off the wheel, we wouldn't have had the accident. Caleb. Oh, I'm sorry, Myra. I just wish you'd stop worrying about me. I'm not worrying about you, Caleb. I want to go home. Oh, all right. I'll go pick up the tickets myself. What time does the train go? Every hour on the half hour, and we've chairs on the one at 11.30. Waiter, are you sure you understand what you're supposed to do? Uh, what, but not why? My husband isn't well, and I want to bring that home to him. I want him to realize that he's not normal. You see, he won't listen to me. Yes, ma'am. My husband is back in the chair car. I'm going back now to get him. We'll be coming back to the diner in a few moments for lunch. You're to watch for us and to be sure it's you who serves us. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Isn't fifty dollars enough? Yes, ma'am. You handle it properly. I'll give you fifty more. After all, for a hundred dollars, you shouldn't be too fussy. No, ma'am. And don't let him write out his order. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. Let me look at the menu. Here you are. Oh. You'll probably have the chicken, so bring him something else, anything else. Now, so long as you bring him something different to what he ordered. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we'll be back in a few moments. Caleb, I've been up to the diner. There's a lineup, but I explained the situation to the waiter, and he said he'd see us right away. Um, what situation? It's time for lunch, Caleb. What situation? Lunch, darling. Come along, the diner's this way. You said you'd explain the situation to the waiter. What situation? Well, that we were hungry. Was being hungry a situation? I merely said you weren't awfully well, that's all. Now, what's wrong with that? Would you prefer to stand in line for an hour? Okay, darling, let's eat. Waiter, here we are. Pardon. Would you let us by, please? Thank you. Excuse me. Come, Caleb. Pardon. Thank you. There we are. Now, you sit down there, Caleb. You shouldn't ride with your back to the engine. I'll hold your chair. Nonsense, darling. Sit down. There. That's it. Now, isn't that comfortable and better than standing on line? I'd feel better in line than on a leash, Myra. Caleb. You drag me along like a little lap dog. That's a very cruel thing to say, Caleb. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm sorry. Let's order, hmm? Waiter. No, not you. The other man. Well, what difference does it make? Caleb, I gave him a tip to get us this table. He might as well serve us, too. Good day, ma'am. What'll you have, Myra? You got a pencil, waiter? I beg your pardon, sir? Don't we have to write our orders out? I... It's uh, all right, sir. I'll take it down. What'll it be, Myra? Chilled consomme is very nice, ma'am. All right. Lamb chop and lionized potatoes. Small salad and... Uh, I guess the ice cream and cake. Coffee, ma'am? Thank you. And for you, sir? I'll have the chicken. No, no, I, I think I'll have the roast lamb. Is it nice? Very nice, sir. All right. Uh, roast lamb... No soup, uh, green peas, mashed potatoes, uh, ice cream, coffee. Thank you, sir. Lamb chops are for you, ma'am? Thank you. And chicken for you, sir. No, I ordered the lamb, roast lamb. No, it's chicken, darling. No, roast lamb. Will you change it, please? I have chicken on my slip, sir. It was chicken, darling. You said chicken. I said roast lamb, and I don't care what you've got on your slip. I want roast lamb. Now get it. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. It was chicken, darling. It was not chicken. Darling, people are looking at us. 
I ordered roast lamb. All right, dear, all right. Why do you say all right, dear, like that? You know perfectly well I ordered the roast lamb. Let's not get excited, Ken. I'm not excited. You persist in treating me as though I were feeble-minded. I suppose as a pawnbroker, you make quite a lot of money. Oh, I do all right. Baltimore is a good town for pawnbrokers. Mm. Well, I guess that's all. Are you sure you understand what to do? Yes, I know. Say, listen, lady. What are you up to? That's none of your business. There's $50 in it for you. Mm? Here's 25 mm. I'll give you another 25 if you do it properly. Now, take a good look at his picture. Yes. Yes, I'll know him. And then when he comes in, what do you say? I say, hello, mister. Back for your wristwatch. How's that? You're not very convincing. Look, lady, I'm a pawnbroker, not an actor. Try it once more. Okay. Hello, mister. Back for your wristwatch. That's better. Here's the watch. And remember, you've never seen or heard of me. Remember, you've never seen or heard of me. Okay. I'm coming. Myra, did you forget your keys? Yes. I was beginning to wonder where you were. You been shopping? Yes. You buy anything exciting? Caleb, I'm very upset. Why did you pawn your watch? What? Your watch, the one you lost. Why did you pawn it? Heaven knows there's plenty of money. If you need any, you can go to the bank and get it. What are you talking about? The watch you said you lost. What do you mean, said I lost? I did lose it. I left it on the wash basin when I washed my hands. And it just vanished into thin air? It wasn't there when I went back. You think somebody stole it? I think it'll turn up somewhere around the house. I saw it in a pawn shop this afternoon. In a pawn shop? I went in and looked at it. It had your initials on the back. Well, then Mrs. Archibald must have taken it and pawned it. Oh, I can't believe it. She's been with us for years. Caleb, don't. I asked the man in the pawn shop. He described the man who brought it in. And? The description fitted you. Myra, I did not pawn that watch. Then somebody's lying somewhere. Well, who do you prefer to believe? Me or some character who runs a pawn shop? Are you implying that I pawned that watch without knowing it? Darling, darling, Caleb, I'm implying nothing. I'm sorry I mentioned it. What's the name of the pawn darling, shop? Darling, forget it. I shouldn't have told you about What's it. What's the name of that pawn shop, Myra? It's on the Royal Pawn Shop. Caleb, please don't go. It's no good, Caleb. I tell you it's no good. You'll only upset yourself. Caleb, please. Did you see it? Yes. Was it yours? Yes. Did you get it back? Did he say you'd brought it in? Yes, yes, yes. Now leave me alone. Leave me alone. Oh, really, Jeff, it was quite amusing. Hmm? Poor Caleb, he was so befuddled. <laughs> I don't like it, Myra. What do you mean? I mean that I don't like it. It's a rotten trick. Are you backing down? No. But I don't like it. Oh, don't be foolish, Jeff. We can't just go on like this. Somebody has got to do something. Put your cigarette out, Jeff. Well, darling, Put I Put was... your cigarette out. Kiss me. Oh, Jeff. So strong, Jeff. So, so tough. I... Jeff, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Flower shop. Well, you must have the wrong house. Mrs. Hunt? Yes, I'm Mrs. Hunt. Then they're for you, lady. All right, thank you. Thanks, lady. Who is that? Your flowers arrived. Flowers? <laughs> Caleb, they're gorgeous. Oh, you were always wonderful at buying flowers. I didn't send you any flowers, Myra. You didn't? There's a card with them. Let me see it. But Caleb, does it matter? Really, does it? Let me see that card. No, Caleb, please. Who are they addressed to? Mrs. James C. Hunt. Mother? But, Myra, Mother's been dead for 15 years. 
How could it I... It doesn't matter, darling. They're lovely. And we'll pretend they're for me. Let me see that card. No, it doesn't matter. Please, please, darling, don't worry about it. I, I think I'd better lie down. Just lie down for a little while. Very amusing, Jeff. He couldn't believe it. Flowers to his mother after all these years. You're certainly not overburdened with conscience, are you? I hate him, Jeff. Him and his calm, handsome suffering. Hmm? He's not like you. He's not, not tough, not strong. He wasn't so stupid he'd see through me. Really, the flowers stunned him addressed to his mother. She's been dead for years. Mm-hmm. How's he taking it? Just give me time. Mara, I don't like it. It's too vicious, too cruel. What's the matter with you, Jeff? I don't like to see this in you. It's such a rotten trick. Jeff. Yes? Don't you love me? You know I love you. That's why I hate to see you acting like this. Put your arms around me, Jeff. That's better. Now, don't worry about Caleb. Just leave everything to me. It's getting late, Mara. You better go. Somebody might see you leaving the apartment building. We've got to be very careful. I don't understand you, Jeff. Well, maybe I'd better be going. We have a late night tomorrow night. Caleb and I are going to the theater. They say it's a marvelous show. Fun getting all dressed up, isn't it, Caleb? Now, where the heck are those tickets? I put them in your pocket, darling. Oh, oh, yeah, here, I got them. Thank you. Tickets, please. Yeah, it is fun being in a white tie again. Oh, here you are. Thank you, sir. Maybe after the show... Excuse we me, sir. Them. These tickets, they're... Uh, yes? They're for Friday the 22nd. That was last night, sir. What? What are you talking about? Oh, Caleb. They're for last night, sir. This is the 23rd. But that's impossible. I know they're for tonight. Here, here, let me see them. What? Somebody's made a mistake. The box office gave me the wrong one. Sorry, sir, you're I holding up the line. If you'd like to please. talk to the manager, just to the right of the box office. Oh, Caleb! Tickets, yeah. Caleb, wake up! Oh. Caleb! Hold on. Mrs. Archibald's gone. Her clothes, everything. She's left us. She's gone. What? Caleb, try to remember you've done something. And this time I'm afraid of... Afraid of what? What are you talking Listen about? Listen to me. I got up this morning. Mrs. Archibald wasn't down. I went up to wake her. I thought she must have overslept. Her room was empty. The bed had been slept in, but she's gone. And then when I came downstairs again, I found your bedroom slippers in the hall covered with mud. No, covered. no. Caleb, please try to remember. You were outside the house sometime during the night. Can't you remember anything? I... Oh, Myra. Myra, I'm afraid. Well, surely you couldn't get up out of bed and go outside without remembering something. I can't. I, I can't remember. Oh, Myra, I'm so afraid. You went to bed as soon as we got home from, from not going to the theater. You were asleep when I came up. Try to remember. I, I can't. Do you remember that it was raining when you went to bed? No. Yes. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say, Caleb. M- Myra. Yes. Do you think I ought to go back? Back? To Windy Hill. Oh, not for long, maybe just for a month or so. All these things I've been doing, the mistakes I make. Every day I do something so hard on you. No. But I can't go on like this. Darling, it. nothing has happened to Mrs. Archibald. I'll probably find her with a couple of phone calls. Oh. No. Caleb, I have no. to find her. Darling, you couldn't have hurt her very badly, or she wouldn't have been able to pack all her clothes and leave. I'll find the McDougal's maid. She might. Oh, Myra. Help me, Myra. Help me. No idea what it's like to be insane. Tonight's the night, Jeff. Larry, you're liable to get your throat slit. None. Have you heard from the Archibald woman? No. No. I simply said that Caleb couldn't stand her around the house another moment. Mm -hmm. Gave her six months' salary and bought her a ticket for Oakland. (laughs) Brother lives there. All I can say, Myra, is that I hope you never get it in for me. Don't be mean, Jeff. I may as well tell you I don't like it. You don't like it. 
How do you suppose I feel? Well, it's so horrible. He's so unsuspecting. He trusts you. There's no time to go remorseful, Jeff. Anyway, after tonight, it'll be all over. What are you going to do? Well, when he's asleep, I'll put the knife in his hand. And then I'll tear my nightdress what? and scream. He's suggested twice that I let him go back to Windy Hill. Right. Tonight will finish him. I'll phone Dr. Hamilton. As soon as they come for him, come over. <sighs> Probably need a drink anyway. Myra, you can't do it. I don't want to quarrel about it now, Jeff. It's tonight or never. Then I'm pulling out. What do you mean? I mean I'm through. Don't say that, Jeff. I'll phone you as soon as they've taken him away. Dr. Hamilton, please. Oh, yes? Well, will he call Mrs. Caleb Hunt the moment he comes in? Yes, it's very urgent. Yes, he has my number. Thank you. can't go romping around in pajamas through people's hedges. Let me go. Well, you're Caleb Hunt, aren't you? Let me go. Look, I'm Jeff Benson. Remember me? Listen, if you go romping around through hedges in your pajamas, people will think you're crazy. I am. I am crazy. No, you're not. It's Myra that's crazy. Myra? How do you know Myra? Well, that's what's been bothering me, Caleb. That's why I came over here in the middle of the night. Look. You know, I've got to have a good long talk. My car's over there. Come back to my apartment. Get me some clothes. I've got a few things to tell you. You're not going to like him much, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So that's the story, Caleb. It's pretty rotten, but it's true. It's too filthy a trick for an apology, so I'm not going to say I'm sorry. Thanks for the clothes. I'm going now. Where? Where do you think? Now look, Caleb, don't do anything that's... Now that you'd be sorry for, you won't, will you? What would you do in my place? Why? Well, I'm asking you. What would you do? out of here like... Like, like a maniac? Oh, I was terribly upset. Were you? I'm touched, Myra. Deeply touched. You'd better come to bed. Jeff Benson gave me this jacket. Did you give it to him before I was reported missing or after? What, what are you talking about? We had quite a chat, Benson and I. I got the whole story. Pawnbroker, the florist, theater box office, Mrs. Archibald, the waiter on the train... Half the city must have been working for you, trying to put me back in Windy Hill. Incidentally, Benson's sick of you. It took seven or eight drinks to make him realize just how sick. But right now, he fairly shakes with nausea at the mere mention of your name. I haven't the faintest idea of what you're talking about. Why should you? I'm crazy. Caleb, stop it. I am. You've driven me crazy, Myra. Crazy. You lay so much as a finger on me, I'll yell the house down. Go ahead, yell. Caleb, stop right. Don't get out of bed, Myra. Insane men always murder the defenseless woman in bed. You, you are mad. You are crazy. Sure, crazy. You make a pretty picture, Myra, sitting up in bed with the sheets drawn demurely around you. Caleb, I... It's not true, Caleb. I... I do love you. 
Really, I do. I love you very much. You know what? I'll <laughs> choke you slowly, Meyer. Insane men always do. And I am insane. <laughs> I have the most wonderful alibi, too. You see, I'm crazy. You've convinced everyone of that. So they'll just send me back to Windy Hill. That's all they can do to me. Does that hurt, my Now, get up. Get up, I said. Stand up. Oh, well, that's it. It's wonderful what you can do when you try, isn't it, Myra? Oh, you dirty little crap. Get it up. I wouldn't kill you, Myra. I'm free. I'm well, and I feel wonderful. I want you to live. I want you to live a long, long time with yourself, all alone. You and your twisted, moldy little mind. Myra, I hope you live to be 90. You have just heard of Unsound Mind, attraction three of Radio City Playhouse as written and directed by Harry W. Duncan. Gene Tatum was heard as Myra, Casey Allen as Caleb, and Phil Sterling as Jeff. The music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shield. Radio City Playhouse is supervised for the National Broadcasting Company by Richard P. McDonough. As you notice tonight, that favorite program of yours, Grand Old Opry, comes to you half an hour earlier during the summer months. So tune in one half hour earlier next week for Grand Old Opry, then stay with us for Radio City Playhouse. Next week, we present a comedy, a comedy which we hope will do more than just make you smile. We hope, in fact, we're almost sure it'll make you laugh. It's called Whistle, Daughter, Whistle, and is written by Ernest Canoy. We sincerely hope you'll join us next Saturday for Whistle, Daughter, Whistle. Next Saturday, Attraction 4, Radio City Playhouse. Bob Warren speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.